There are secrets, hidden in plain sight, that govern the fate of nations. This is the stuff that spy movies are made of, whispers of protocols so clandestine they seem ripped from the pages of a Le Carre novel. But this is no work of fiction. Today, we delve into a world shrouded in secrecy, a world where words carry the weight of nations, where ink could be mightier than any weapon. The Letters of Last Resort The Letters of Last Resort Four identical envelopes, each addressed to the commanding officer of one of Britain's ballistic missile submarines. Inside, a chilling directive orders on what to do if the unimaginable occurs. If a nuclear strike decapitates the British government, leaving a nation in ruins. To comprehend the sheer gravity of these letters, one must first understand their raison d'etre, their very purpose. It is a chilling paradox, a testament to both our capacity for destruction and our desperate hope for survival. Picture this, the world descends into chaos, mushroom clouds paint the sky, and the seat of British power lies in ruins. Communication networks are down, cities are reduced to rubble, and the chain of command has been irrevocably broken. In this terrifying vacuum, the fate of a nation rests on the shoulders of one individual. The commander of a Vanguard-class submarine, armed with Trident nuclear missiles, patrolling the depths of the ocean, completely cut off from the surface world. These submarines, silent leviathans patrolling the deep, become the last bastion of British sovereignty. The letters of last resort are their only guide, their compass in a world consumed by nuclear fire. They are a contingency plan for the unthinkable, a last resort when all other options have been exhausted. But their very existence begs the question, what horrors could drive a nation to contemplate such measures? The purpose of these letters is not to wage war but to ensure that a nation, even in its death throes, retains the power to choose its response. It's about maintaining a semblance of control in the face of unimaginable chaos, a flicker of agency in a world teetering on the brink. It's a stark reminder of the precarious balance upon which our civilization rests, the ever-present threat of annihilation that hangs over our heads. The letters are a testament to the chilling realities of the nuclear age, a constant reminder of the potential for catastrophic destruction that mankind holds. They are a product of the Cold War, a time when the threat of global nuclear war loomed large but their relevance has not diminished in the face of modern threats. The world may have moved on, but the destructive power of nuclear weapons remains, a horrifying legacy of our past that continues to cast a long shadow over our present. The letters of last resort are a chilling reminder of the fragility of peace, the ever-present danger that lurks beneath the surface of our seemingly stable world. They are a testament to the terrible power we wield, a power that has the capacity to both protect and destroy on a scale unimaginable. In a world where the threat of nuclear war, while diminished, is not extinguished, these letters remain a stark reminder of the stakes involved, the ultimate insurance policy in a world where the premium is paid in fear. The writing of the letters of last resort is a ritual shrouded in secrecy, an act as solemn as it is terrifying. It is a tradition passed down from one prime minister to the next, a burden of responsibility that comes with the keys to 10 Downing Street. The moment a new prime minister takes office, they are immediately confronted with a chilling reality. The power to destroy rests in their hands. There are no cameras to document this moment, no aides to witness the weight of the decision being made. It is a solitary act, the Prime Minister alone, with the weight of their nation's fate resting on their shoulders. They are presented with a stark choice, a series of unthinkable options that will shape the destiny of their nation in the event of nuclear Armageddon. The content of the letters is a closely guarded secret, known only to the Prime Minister and a select few. Some speculate that the options range from retaliation to seeking peace, from preserving the remnants of British society to offering a helping hand to any survivors regardless of allegiance. The possibilities are as varied as they are horrifying, each choice carrying with it unimaginable consequences. Once the letters are written, they are placed in sealed envelopes, each addressed to the captain of a Vanguard-class submarine. These envelopes are then locked away in safes aboard the submarines, ready to be opened only in the event of a confirmed nuclear strike on the United Kingdom. The Prime Minister also keeps a set of copies, secured in a safe within the Ministry of Defense. The process of writing the letters of last resort is a stark reminder of the immense responsibility that comes with leading a nuclear-armed nation. 
It is a burden that weighs heavily on the shoulders of every Prime Minister, a constant reminder of the potential for catastrophe that hangs over our world. The very act of contemplating such scenarios, of weighing the potential consequences of each decision, is enough to test the mettle of even the most seasoned leader. The contents of the letters of last resort are a matter of national security, their contents a closely guarded secret. Yet, the human mind, faced with such chilling possibilities can't help but speculate. What words could possibly carry the weight of a nation on the brink? What options could a leader possibly consider when facing the annihilation of their world? Some believe the letters outline a graduated response, a series of actions dependent on the scale of the attack and the information available. A limited strike might warrant a different response than a full-scale nuclear assault. The Prime Minister might instruct the submarine commanders to gather intelligence, to assess the situation before taking any irreversible action. Others believe the letters offer a stark choice, retaliate in kind or seek to rebuild. Retaliation, a fiery inferno unleashed upon the enemy, might seem like the instinctive response, an eye for an eye in the face of unimaginable aggression. Yet in the ashes of a nuclear exchange, what victory could there be? Would such an act be justice or simply perpetuating a cycle of destruction? Then there's the possibility of seeking peace, of using the remaining nuclear arsenal as leverage to negotiate a ceasefire, to prevent further bloodshed. It's a glimmer of hope in the darkness, a desperate attempt to salvage something from the wreckage. But in a world consumed by chaos, would such pleas even be heard, let alone heeded? The Prime Minister might also choose a different path altogether, one focused on the preservation of life. The letters could contain instructions to seek out survivors, to offer aid and assistance to those who remain, regardless of nationality. In the face of such devastation, the lines between nations might blur, replaced by a shared humanity, united by a common tragedy. Some argue that the letters might even contain instructions for the submarine commanders to establish a new government in exile, a beacon of hope amidst the ruins. This new government, armed with the knowledge of what had transpired, could work towards rebuilding the nation, preserving its culture and values for future generations. The letters of last resort are not merely pieces of paper, they are arguably the most powerful documents on earth. Their existence necessitates an equally formidable system of safeguards, ensuring their security, and above all, preventing their misuse. These safeguards are a testament to the meticulous planning and unwavering vigilance that surrounds these instruments of last resort. The journey of these letters begins with their creation. Written by the Prime Minister, they are reviewed by a select few trusted advisors, individuals bound by oaths of secrecy and the gravity of the situation. This ensures that the letters are coherent, strategically sound, and reflect the true will of the Prime Minister. Once finalized, the letters are meticulously copied and sealed in identical envelopes. These envelopes are then transported under the strictest security protocols to the four Vanguard-class submarines stationed at sea. The submarines themselves are marvels of modern engineering designed to remain undetected in the depths of the ocean, their locations a closely guarded secret. Aboard each submarine, the letters are stored in safes equipped with multiple locks, requiring simultaneous authorization from several high-ranking officers to access. These officers are carefully vetted and undergo rigorous psychological evaluations to ensure their ability to handle the immense pressure of their responsibility. The submarines, patrolling silently beneath the waves, serve as mobile vaults, ensuring that the letters are never in one location for too long. This constant movement, combined with their stealth capabilities, makes them incredibly difficult targets even in the event of a coordinated attack. But the safeguards extend beyond physical security. The submarine commanders are trained to verify the authenticity of any order to open the letters, requiring confirmation from multiple sources and adhering to a strict chain of command. This ensures that the letters are never used prematurely or on the basis of false information. The existence of the letters of last resort is a testament to the very real threat posed by nuclear weapons. The intricate web of safeguards surrounding them is a reflection of the gravity of the situation, the lengths to which nations will go to ensure that these last resorts are never employed lightly. The letters of last resort are a chilling reminder of the world we live in, a world where the power to destroy hangs over our heads like the sword of Damocles. The responsibility for writing these letters, for deciding the fate of a nation in the face of unimaginable horror, is a burden that few could bear. 
As we've journeyed through the purpose, the procedure, the potential options, and the stringent security measures surrounding these letters, one question lingers. What does it say about humanity that we've reached a point where such measures are deemed necessary? The letters of last resort are a stark testament to the destructive power we possess, a power that demands our utmost respect and restraint. They are a reminder that the choices we make today, the paths we choose to tread, will have consequences that resonate far beyond our lifetimes.